Meet the Anzacs, written by Claire Saxby, illustrated by Max Berry. Anzac stands for Australian and New Zealand Army Corps. It is the name given to Australian and New Zealand troops who landed at Gallipoli in World War One. The Anzac name is now a symbol of bravery and mateship. This is the story of how the Anzac legend began. When England declared war on Germany on the 4th of August 1914, Australia wanted to support the British Empire, but we were a new nation and didn't have a national army that could serve overseas, so the government put out a call for volunteers. And travelled on trains, rode horses, pedalled bikes, and walked and walked and walked to the cities. They came in their thousands, eager to sign up. In New Zealand, men were doing the same thing. I'm going to serve my country. I need a job so I can feed my kids. I want to see the world. The join-up queue stretched for miles. Officials turned away men who were missing teeth, who wore glasses, or who had flat feet. Too old, too young, too short, and too skinny. Training camps for the soldiers popped up like mushrooms after rain. Exercise drills kept them fit, and mock battles showed them how to fight as a team. Cities were a bus with the excitement of so many extra people. Off-duty soldiers went to the movies, played sports, and waited. When the time came to leave for war, families, friends, and sweethearts crowded the docks to farewell their soldiers. The air was filled with cheering and streamers. We're proud of you. Wish it was me. Keep safe. Most men thought they were going directly to war in Europe, but the ships were actually bound for Egypt. On board, the soldiers trained every day. You need to be fit, men. Look sharp. In their spare time, they played cards and tour. There were concerts and boxing matches. When they reached the equator, they held a crossing the line ceremony. It was like passing the halfway mark in a race. The ship stopped at Cairo after six long weeks at sea. The Australians and the New Zealanders set up camps side by side, close to the pyramids. The air swelled hot and fierce, full of sand. Lucky this is just a short stop. I know I'm packing. We'll be on our way soon. Every morning, bugles woke the soldiers for long marches, inspections and in-camp drills. But there was still no action and plenty of off-duty time. They visited the pyramids and the colourful Cairo markets. They rode camels, all while waiting for the call to action. Some days the men packed up camp, marched for hours and set up in a new spot, only to pull the camp down again the same day. It was all practice for war. What a waste of time! Let's go to the fight! Although they weren't yet known as Anzacs, the Australians and New Zealanders were beginning to work as a unit. They trained together and organised cricket matches. Newspapers were out of date before they reached Egypt. Letters from home took forever to find men. As the weeks went on, the men grew more frustrated. It made the heat worse and the pesky sands harder to bear. We've been training for months. Surely we're ready. The war will be over if we don't get a move on. After many false alarms, it was finally time to go to war. The soldiers packed up the Cairo camp for the very last time. They were ready to take on the enemy and make their countries proud. They travelled by ship to an island in the Mediterranean Sea. There, the men practiced climbing over the sides of the ships and down rope ladders into smaller landing boats. There were clues that the battle was close. Big guns were unpacked and assembled. Bags were packed and the soldiers slept in their clothes. I've never seen so many ships. I've never worked so hard. It must be soon. Late one night, the men learned that there was war about to begin. In a few hours, they were to land on the beach at Gallipoli and capture the Turkish peninsula. Before dawn on 25th April 1915, the Australian and New Zealand soldiers scaled the rope ladders. As the last man squeezed into the landing boat, they pushed off into the darkness. War was like nothing they could have imagined.